The New Orleans Pelicans just put together one of the best drafts in terms of drafting for fit and for winning now uh, that I think of anybody. I mean, you look at their draft, Dyson Daniels, he fits that roster perfectly. Same with EJ Liddell, um, especially at 41. I mean, I had him as a French lottery pick, uh, but getting that kind of value there. And then you've also got CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Jonas Valanciunas, uh, the big three there from last year, and then of course, you know, the big guy coming back this year. Uh, but of course, the additions to the squad Dyson Daniels, EJ Liddell, we just talked about Zion Williamson coming back to the squad next year. I mean, he looks healthy, he looks better than ever. Uh, he used all the noise, fueled, used it as fuel, and man, he has come back. He looks like an absolute monster. He literally looks like Hulk now in those pictures on his Instagram. So make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you do enjoy any point, and make sure to leave me a comment down below as it really helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. Now let's go ahead and get started. Looking at their draft day steals, starting off with Dyson Daniels, who they picked up with the number eight overall pick. This was a guy that was rumored to go as high as five to uh, the, D the Detroit Pistons. Standing at six foot seven and weighing in at 200 pounds, the 19 year old averaged 11 and a half points per game last year, as well as 6.2 rebounds, 4.4 assists, two steals, and 2.4 turnovers for the G League Ignite. Shooting at 45% from the field, only 26% from three. That's his big question mark there in 31 minutes per game. And I think he's a true franchise point guard, probably the best true point guard in the class. He just can't really shoot the ball. 26% um, from three, as we saw. Uh, but, man, he is probably the best perimeter defender in this draft class, without a doubt. Him and Jeremy Sohan up there for the two top defenders in this draft class. And I feel like Dyson Daniels, he fits that role. He can come in. He can be the true point guard. Let CJ slide back over to the two, which we'll talk about a little bit more in detail later. But I think, I mean, that's the perfect pick for you there at eight. Glad they didn't trade out of it. Uh, and they ended up with Dyson Daniels, which was the right pick. And they also got, later in the draft, I believe at 41 or 42, if I'm not mistaken, they pick up EJ Liddell. Uh, averaged 19.5 points per game last year, 8 boards, 2.5 assists, 2.5 blocks. I mean, 49% from the field, 38% from three. He was a monster last year at Ohio State. And I feel like he fell because he's 6'7", 240, playing power forward. But you can find this guy some minutes, I feel like. He can come in, he can get you in the pick and pop. He's a good three-point shooter. And you can always use that in the NBA. Uh, now, when I see Dyson Daniels, I see flashes of Lonzo Ball. Not just flashes, but almost like a mirror image of Lonzo Ball. I feel like he can come in and do exactly what Lonzo did for this Pelican squad. Uh, Zion, of course, was not too happy when they let Zion or when they went when they let Lonzo walk last offseason. Goodness, I can't talk today. Uh, but Lonzo put up about 14 points per game, five boards, four assists. Uh, while shooting it very efficiently from three, not so much the field, about 42%, but 38% from three and a steal and a half per game. That's what I feel like they were missing last year when once they acquired CJ and they were making their playoff push with a true point guard. I feel like Dyson Daniels fits that role perfectly for this Pelican squad. Now, you take a look at the big four. Uh, Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, Zion Williamson, and Jonas Valanciunas all looking to have a big year coming into the season. We'll start with... Uh, Brandon Inger, who averaged 23 points per game last year, six rebounds and five and a half assists per game. He was really the only thing that got him through the first half of the season uh, into, you know, past the, the trade deadline when they picked up C.J. McCollum. And then they started winning a lot more. 46% from the field, 33% from three for their young superstar. He's looking more and more like a franchise player. Um, he just needs to get that three-point efficiency up a little bit, and, man, he will be... One of the best scorers we have in the NBA. C.J. McCollum proved he can come in and lead a squad last year when he got traded at the deadline. 24.5 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, and 6 assists per game last year for this Pelican squad. And he was really the spark they needed. I mean, they completely turned it around after the trade deadline. Almost 50-40-90. 49% from the field and 39% from three. 1.4 steals as well, so doing it on the defensive end of things. And once he got... Uh, Taken away from Dame, you know, he, he kind of proved he could be that guy in an offense. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas, 18 points per game, 11.5 boards, and 2.6 assists last year. Uh, he really came on. I was surprised the Grizzlies gave him up for so little. Um, the Pelicans definitely won that trade, getting Valanciunas and Trey Murphy for Zaire Williams, and I believe Steven Adams, maybe a future first was involved. 
Uh, but, yeah, very efficient from the field. I believe 54% and 36% from three on two attempts a game. That three-point shooting, that's getting up there. Even though it looks like a catapult, it's getting up there. And then, of course, Zion Williamson coming back. Looks like he's in the best shape of his life. 27 points a game, seven rebounds, 3.7 assists. As a 20-year-old, bullying grown men before he was even able to legally drink alcohol. That's just crazy. 61% from the field, 29% from three at 20 years old. Like I said, uh, him coming in, Pelicans fans, you should be excited. Your franchise player is finally ready to play. Now, let's take a look at the youth here that they've got on this squad. Jackson Hayes uh, will start in the top left corner. Still so much potential with all that athleticism, all that length that I believe 6'11 and can run and jump. And then you got the UDFA incoming sophomore in Jose Alvarado, Grand Theft Alvarado. Him coming back, he can look to compete for minutes at that point guard spot. Larry Nance Jr., he's not necessarily young anymore, but he was huge for them on the defensive side of things last year. Keir Lewis Jr. coming off the ACL tier should be able to play a big part for them. And then the two sophomore forwards at the top, Herb Jones and Trey Murphy, both great defenders. Both should be huge for them in this upcoming season, playing their bench role. Now, looking at someone, it's time for them to move on from. And yes, it is Devontae Graham. Um, They gave up. Well, they gave up what eventually will become Mark Williams to the Hornets, and they signed Devontae Graham to a four-year, $48 million deal in a signed trade. Uh, he averaged 12 points and four assists for him last last year, but he, he was not efficient at all. 36% from the field and 34% from three. That's just not good. I mean, he was you know a good passer for him, but just completely inefficient from both the field and three, and that's not what you're looking for whatsoever. Now, let's take a look at their potential starting five this year. Of course, Dyson Daniels. I think he's going to be their starting point guard from day one. I think he fits this squad perfectly. I've said it a million times this video. C.J. McCollum and Brandon Ingram at the two and the three, respectively. Great scoring there, and Daniels will provide the perimeter defense for the top three guys. That's, That's probably the biggest missing piece on this Pelican squad. You've got great defense at the point guard spot, but other than that, are there any really great defenders on the squad? I mean, Zion's good at blocks, but eh. I, I'm not sure how much defense is in that starting lineup. But you look at the backups, guys that could potentially be coming off the bench. There's 12 of them. They're rolling deep. And there's a lot of defense here. Larry Nance, uh, Jackson Hayes, EJ Liddell, Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy. Six guys that are you know known for their defense more than their offense. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. But a lot of depth. For this Pelicans squad, you look at the guards off the bench, and you can even throw Devontae Graham in here, although I think they should trade him this offseason. But Keir Lewis Jr. and uh, Jose Alvarado at the guard spots, and then at the forwards, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, um, EJ Liddell. Maybe you could even throw Larry Nance Jr. in there, but he can also play some center minutes with Jackson Hayes. This is going to be a young, fun, exciting Pelicans squad going into next year, and I can't wait to see what they do, especially with Zion Williamson coming back. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for making it to this point. If you did, uh, make sure to like button and subscribe button if you did enjoy at any point. Like I said, make sure to leave me a comment down below. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.